I was actually thinking this morning, like the chair I'm sitting in is my great grandmother's chair. And I thought, you know, I bet she never would have thought her chair would be used in a sermon one day. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to continue in the Ark Sermon series. And today I just wanted to focus a little bit on uh, Genesis chapter 6, which uh, it leads up to the reasoning of why there was a flood. And so the title of today's sermon is called From Creation to Noah. Um, I started out the series summarizing the first five chapters of Genesis, which was the creation of the, wor the world, uh, creation of man, and then how sin entered the world. So uh, with the beginning of that, um, for lack of better words, God was deceived by Adam and Eve when they ate from the tree in the Garden of Eden. And then God banished them from the garden. Well, fast forward, then Cain murdered Abel. And in that, more sin took place and started to grow to the point where uh, sin was in the world like it is today. Uh, so to start out... I want to use uh, Luke 17, 20, verses 26 and 27, where uh, Jesus is speaking to uh, of the signs of the end times, and he says specifically, Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark, then the flood came and destroyed them all. So let's go back to uh, Genesis 6. And with verses 6 to 4, um, I was going to see if there's anybody that would like to read that. I'd be happy to read it, Randy, but uh, I think that's uh, verses 1 to 4. So here we go. Oh, okay. Uh, when human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God went into the daughters of humans and they had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. So the question I ask is, who were the Nephilim and who were the sons of God? So me being the uh, nerdy pastor that I am, I was going to play a clip from a movie. Yep, he's already shaking his head. He knows. From a clip from a movie from, uh, called Spaceballs that's a, a spoof of uh, Star Wars. Let me see if I can figure out how to okay, share the screen. So uh, basically, the, uh, the Nephilim are giants that roam the earth, and the way verse 4 is written almost makes it sound like the Nephilim were the ones procrastinating with the women back in those days. And uh, if that were the case, and anatomically speaking, what I was seeing was Dark Helmet playing with the dolls, and I was like, that's just not possible. So uh, I'm learning what we have learned and studying more into the scripture, uh, studying more into the scripture, come to find out that the, the sons of God are uh, fallen angels and that the babies that came from procreating with the women were the Nephilim and in other translations the sons of God were known as old powerful men um, one of the translations I found was uh, in it's called White LT Young's literal translation for Genesis 6 4 saying the fallen ones were in the earth in those days, and even afterwards, when sons of God came into, came into the daughters of men, and they have born to them, they are the heroes who from old 
are the men of uh, men of name. So the Lord had uh, regretted creating human beings, and because of that, their hearts were full of evil, and he decided to wipe all the humans off the face of the earth as uh, punishment for their sins. And except for uh, one faithful man named Noah, and so in Genesis uh, 6, 5 through 8, it says, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart were only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth uh, the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of God, of the Lord. So that's the uh, where I want to end today. And then on my next sermon, I'm going to conclude the Ark Sermon series with Noah being commanded by God to build an ark and to survive a 40-day and 40-night flood. Um, so in closing, I wanted to use another verse that men mentions the sons of God, and that's Job 1, 6, and 7. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth on the earth, and from walking up and down upon it. And I had always thought of in Revelation where Satan hadn't been cast out of heaven. How does he go around being a serpent to Eve and also tempting Jesus while he prayed? So uh, working on the sermon, Pastor David showed me on Job 6 uh, that, um, yeah, he showed me that on uh, Job 6, and then I kept reading, and then when I saw verse 7, it was like an eye-opening opening verse where Satan could walk around the earth causing all of us to fall short and sin, and here I thought it was only demons that was doing his bidding. So it made me think about uh, Spaceballs again where Dark Helmet is playing with the dolls and manipulating Princess Vespa to fall for him, which initially is what Satan wants to do with us. He wants us to follow and worship him instead of God. And so I, uh, I pray that we str stay strong from the, from the devil's schemes and hold tight to the glory of God. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Randy, that's, um, that's uh, uh, a good uh, step in the sermon series that you got and taking us from uh, the beginning up to where Noah is getting ready to uh, receive instruction from the Lord on building the ark. And it is true that... Uh, you know, that God had regrets on, you know, what was happening. I mean, the word regret there, you know, um, you can regret that you ever started something because you, you didn't see the, you know, all of the implications of that. Of course, God can see everything. And before he started, he knew that, uh, you know, that man was, was going to fall. The, the whole purpose of the Garden of Eden was basically to, to create man to where he was a, a creature that had a choice, uh, a, a, that we uh, truly have a, a freedom to choose one thing or another, uh, creatures of free will. He created the angels and they had free will and, and a third of them went with Satan. But when God created man to, to give him a creature, to, to be creatures of free will, he had to give us at least one bad choice in the whole Garden of Eden. I mentioned that uh, last uh, Sunday after your, or last time after your sermon there. 
And of course, you know, to have free will and to have the descendants that he promised to Abraham later in the scripture that they'd be as great as the, you know, the number of the stars in the sky or the number of sand on the seashore, uh, to, to, you know, the, the choice inevitably that man was going to choose uh, the wrong, make the wrong choice and make the bad choice, that that's in some ways was inevitable. But he could see that outcome. And yet, when the whole world was wicked and there was just that one man in his family that was following him, Noah, and, uh, and you know, the, the, the ones that came before him up to that point down, you know, in the, in the family line, um, basically Noah was chosen to continue the line of, of humanity. And, uh, uh, but for everyone else of the hundreds of thousands or millions or billions, every how many there was of people at the time of the flood, all of them, Scripture says, were thinking only evil continuously. That, that kind of reminds me of the way our world is today. Everything you see, all the images on TV, everything that's talked about, uh, it's, it seems to be evil, all evil continuously. And yet we know that you know, God has a remnant that is uh, his people, that is that we live among them. And that's the way Noah was. He lived among a wicked world. And, uh, you know, God did not spare them. He, he regretted that he had made man because of the wickedness that was in that time. And think about the wickedness that's in the world today. And, you know, what's God going to do? And, you know, I, I want to be among the remnant that pleases him. I want to be the virgins that have their lamps lit and the servants that are waiting for their master to return. Uh, Noah was in that position then, and um, your first verse there that you read, Luke 17, says, Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. That is the second coming of Jesus. And so the wickedness is in the world today. You know, we can relate to what Noah was going through. He lived in a world where he was surrounded by all that wickedness. And, and it's shaping up just the way the scripture uh, describes for when the end times come. And so I appreciate, Randy, you uh, bringing the word. And uh, uh, we're not doing the singing services anymore, so this was a welcome uh, break from preparing sermons for me. I appreciate that, Randy. And... Uh, but God is blessing you, and uh, and he's going to use you for this, and so I appreciate that. So look forward to the next installment of the ARC Sermon Series, and uh, let's give uh, Randy a God bless you and a praise to the Lord one more time.